What's up, guys? Tim from Olsen Motorsports. Todd from Olsen Motorsports. You can't see him because he's covered in camo. But anyways, uh, today this is part two of our engine cam timing. So if you remember last time, we tore it down and we were waiting on a camshaft from Germany and it took a while to get it. So we have the new camshaft in. Today we're gonna to show you how to install the chain boxes, right? Correct. And we're also gonna show you how to install the cams and how to time the cams. 993, super easy, can't screw it up as long as you have the proper tools. So Todd has told me every surface is clean. Okay. And he's also told me all the tools are ready to go. Mostly. Mostly. Yeah. All right. Well, the NHRA guys can build the whole motor in 15 minutes. We should be able to do this in no time flat. So okay. gasket, number one, if everything's clean, we pop the gasket on. So this one, it's got an O-ring up here and this O-ring is an oil pass-through tube from the chain box. The chain box has a, has a orifice in it. So that one goes on the top. It's rubber ring, so you don't need to put any sealant on it. As long as the surfaces are completely clean, right, Todd? Yes, sir. It will not leak. All right, so first thing we're gonna do here, if you notice, Todd has the factory Porsche tool, and this tool has a pin in it. Show that, Todd. It has a pin in it right here that goes in the crankshaft in this location, and then this goes where the, IM, where the RMS bearing is. And now I'm just gonna hold the flywheel like this. I thought you said it was clean. I didn't clean the flywheel, we're replacing that. <laughs> it wasn't, oh my God. So he'll, I'll get him close. Right there. And then he'll tap that guy in. Now we are locked 100% at TDC. Uh, I have a <laughs> now we're 100% locked at TDC. Um, now we can, now that we're held with this, this won't ever move. And we can put our chain boxes on. It's gonna be your side. This is my side. Remember in the last video that we did, we did on a video on how to prepare, how to prepare the, the with the scrapers, the magnesium. Yes. I'm moving the caps. So you have to be really, really careful with these things. And then we're gonna pull the roll pin out. So this is the front, this is the top side. This is the old chain, this is the old chain tensor. This is the top side. This gets the cap and the roll pin, and this goes in the back side of the chain of the chain box. This one right here gets the retainer pin on the bottom. So we'll have to pound that roll pin out, which we have a fancy tool for that. So we're gonna change these guys out. And that's how we do it. And if you look, we're seated on both sides. This bad boy is ready to go. Keith, that chair is not for you. That chair is for me. The chair, the chair does not belong in this room. It really doesn't, does it? So that hump on the bottom of the chain guys always fights me on this side because you got to get it over this boss. I hate that. So we got the we got the box in, we have the gasket in, we have the guide. These are brand new guys here, and now we're putting the locator pins in for the bottom. And right now, what I do is I stick a screwdriver to hold my chain up. I stick a screwdriver in there so it doesn't so it doesn't fall down. Then this guy, we'll insert in here. Grab our trusty flashlight, find the hole. All right, so now I got the tool that we forgot. I use a radiator pick, but basically what I do is I stick it in here and I get it behind here, and I use that to hold the back of the guide. But it does just long enough. So I'm trying to make sure that this thing rotates all the way around, 
and then I'm freed up and I'm in the center. So I repeat the same thing on the bottom. Stick that guy in there. Let's give it a little bit of pressure. That's in. They're not torqued, but they're snug. And then we'll be right in the middle on the guy. All right, so next we have to torque these, 18.4 foot-pounds. It's a really thin crush washer and a long bolt, so it's not a crazy amount of torque. There we go. And then Todd's, yours is 18.4 as well. The rag is, because sometimes I'm an idiot, and I drop things down inside the engine case. And then Todd gets really mad at me because I make him take it apart and go find his stuff. So it's just, True. I got tired of the guys yelling at me for dropping stuff in there. So I decided to use a rag for that. True story, right Todd? Yes, sir. Oop, slip. Eighteen point four. So next thing we're gonna do, I'm going to oil the camshaft housing passage. So I just use a little drop of oil. What else could you use, Tim, on that? You could use assembly lube. Right. We coat, we coat the cam and also the housing with oil. Told you we're gonna be like the NHRA guys, dude. Uh, we'd have missed like three heats by now. That's true, that's true. Those guys are insane. They rebuild the whole engine in like 12 minutes. It's ridiculous. You can use a Q-tip if you want to put it in there. If you don't like getting your hands dirty and you're semi-retired from wrenching or you can just use your finger. That's what I use. <laughs> My fingers are too fat to fit all the way down inside there. Little sausage rings? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that was funny. This is a left bank camshaft. The lubes are opposing. He has the right bank camshaft and the lubes are together. Bank one, bank two. Bank one, bank two. You can actually, you can actually screw that up, believe it or not. But you would find out as soon as you went to put the rockers in. I never tried that before. So I got a lube camshaft in there. And then if you see, I got a bunch of oil right here and that's super important because that's a mating surface. So I'm just gonna take my trusty rag, stick that guy in there. Next thing we gotta do is, uh, <laughs> so here we have, this is just a high temperature silicone grease that we use. We have to put our O-rings and also our uh, seal on. You want me to go get you some gloves? No, I don't need gloves. Oh. And then we use uh, Worth flange sealant. I always use a brand new bottle every time because Todd puts them away dirty and uh, the bottles end up all grungy. So I use a brand new bottle. Doesn't matter how many gaskets I'm putting on. So we just have a little general, you know, general coating of lube on there. Slap this guy over. And then I always take and wipe off any excess grease I would have put on there. All right, so we got our flange sealing out. Nice little shake. Because the brand new bottles, not that you've ever used one, but the brand new bottles, they have like that liquid at the top. Yeah, it's just like mustard. Yeah, so you gotta shake it, that's perfect. 
So what I do is I just go. Hey, quick it matches and dirty. your shoes. Oh, you do that on purpose. Actually, it does actually. And you take a chemical brush and just dab it. Todd likes to get it with his fingers, but I like to use the. It tastes good. I like to use the chemical brush. Hang on, I got to do the other side. You don't need much. I mean, some people just slob this stuff all over and it gets all crazy, so. And you don't want it to ooze out too far and get into somewhere where it's not supposed to be. Yeah, so as you, as you, as you use the same like area on the pan, you use less and less. Because it'll just kind of get that coating on the other side. So that's about the perfect amount of sealant. You don't want any more than that. If you do, you're, just, you're wasting money. Then the bean counters get all upset. So affectionately, the boys have named this my she shed, even though I'm never in here. So I don't know how that happened. So I start with two bolts like this. Oh, did you take the only 10 mil? I had to go search for it. Bro, we have like seven, this is the most common tool in this whole shop and I had to search for this one. So what we're doing here is we start to run this gasket in. Just as it starts to bulge out, you take the seal installer. We talked about this in one of our previous videos where it's a non-marring spoon. And you take that and you push that guy in there. Just like that. Remember it's mag, so you want to use something that's really, really soft. Because you don't want to tear this seal. If you tear the seal, everything comes apart. So I just use this to work that guy in there. Yeah, buddy. Oh. I'm gonna torque these guys down. All right, so now we're gonna install our shims. This one has the chamfer. This chamfer goes towards that, and then the shims for the guides comes after it. So it sits on there like that. And then we need to rotate up to top dead center here. With the keyway? Yeah, so we can get the keyway in, which is my favorite part. My oh, absolute favorite part of putting these motors together is this little keyway. It's fun. No. I it's like this. one of those games at the carnival that you can never win. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. You know? Yep. See, he's got, he's ballsy. He's going to do it without his, without, without his mechanics helper. Okay, let me follow. The Olsen but you know, way. I'm telling you what, though, if you do it the Olsen if way, if you actually do drop it in there, that'd be the best YouTube video ever. No, you know, at least would, I would. would at least I wouldn't be mad at you for dropping it and then making me tear the motor apart. I'd be mad at myself. Yeah, probably but be better. If though. you did that, it would break the internet. So you're saying I should throw it in there? And then we could, and then we could do a YouTube video with a on how to rebuild the bottom end of a 993. You clearly have never seen what I can do with a boroscope and a shop vac. Yeah. So I did here, I just use a pair of channel locks and I put the rag on the bottom. Not that it would score it, but you can kind of rock that thing back and forth and kind of see that you're straight. All right, so we gotta get our timing gear on. Why is that not sitting on? Yeah. So once that's kind of screwed in like that, then we're gonna to come to the back side. Then we're gonna install our cam jig here. So if you see this goes, this has this slot and this is Todd's side. So this one's in the center. You see the center of this cam. That's the center of that cam. And then this one is offset. So you really, you, it's impossible to screw this up. So Todd's gonna put that on his side. There you go, Todd. Thank you. I'm gonna put this on my side. 
like that. And then I'm gonna, you can just got a little hex here where you can use that to rotate the cam, to locate it to where you need to be. But I can do mine by hand. On this one, on top dead center, on top dead center, hold on with that second. Okay. On top dead center, TDC one, we have the cam locked on the backside, the keyways pointed up. Over here, we're on top dead center, cylinder one, the keyways pointed up. And if you look over here on the cam, the intake cam, you would not be able to put this rocker in because you can see the cam is, is loaded here. So on the backside, this jig only goes one way. It's just a little, little off center. So you would slide this guy in like that, line your holes up, and then when you rotate over 360 degrees to top dead center cylinder number four, you'd be on the backside of the cam. So that's kind of how the cam timing works. It's, a, it's, easier, it's easier to do than if you were not doing the 993 because, or the, yeah, if you were not doing the 993, because then you'd have to kind of wing it and get it close. So this is a much easier cam setup to time. So he's screwing that in back there. I screw that in up there and I'm gonna leave this loose. I'm just gonna cinch it down here, but then I'm gonna leave it loose. So the cam won't move, but these will move and the cam's locked. And now we're gonna put our tensioners in. So the tensioners, the tensioners drop in here. Just do it basically by hand. That's pretty tight. I can't go like this and I can't, I can't really push it down with my hand. So now I know I'm fully tensioned here. I've got that chain tight this way all the way around. And then this one's tight here. And now I can go ahead and, and torque my cam down. That's really what you got to pay. That's what you got to pay attention to. You got to pay attention that the cam is tensioned this way while you torque it down. Todd's going to torque. Todd's going to torque this camshaft to 88 and a half foot pounds. You know everything's locked. So we have the cams locked. We have the crankshaft locked. You technically don't need to hold it, but we like to do it just to be on the sort of the safe side. Good job, Todd. Sweet. Now that's done and cam timing is theoretically set per factory specifications. So we'll run, we can take these jigs out because everything's done. And then we're going to double check with the Stromsky racing deal before we put our rockers in. We added the Stromsky, Stromsky gauges. And why did we do that, Keith? Not only to double check our work, but we actually I'll, had a request. I'll, I'll tell you. So we had a gentleman call in from Canada last week saying that he's been watching our cam timing disassembly videos and that he decided since we were so thorough with our videos that he was going to take his 964 motor apart Which himself. Which is awesome. That's Which is great. Part. This is why we're doing these videos. Except we haven't put out the cam timing video on how to retime the motor. So now he's got his motor apart in his garage waiting for our next timing video. Uh, we don't have a 964 apart right now, so we are going to demonstrate that procedure on this 993 motor because we love our fans and exactly. we want to keep them happy. So Tim's going to take us through that process now. Which is super easy. What oh is that God. that you're putting in, Tim? This is the know. top dead center locator. Got it. All right, so I'm going to spin this guy down. There's my piston. I can feel my piston right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back that off a little bit. Okay. This is what we're gonna do. We know we're at top dead center cylinder one. We've got the dial indicator set up here, which is the Stromsky Racing, but we don't know what zero is. We don't know where this is set, right? 78 degrees, but we know we're at 360. Um, so how you properly set that guy is we're gonna come back 
like so. Actually, we're going to go forward. And then I'm going to run this guy down to somewhere in that neighborhood. So I've got this thing run most of the way down. I've got it locked down. And then we're at 302 degrees. And I'm going to come backwards till I feel contact, which is right there. So that's contact. And then I'm going to zero this to absolute. And then I'm going to go about 360 degrees, which I know is going to be somewhere around here because I've got my locator that's it right there then I'm going to take 200 that that reading right there is 234 so I'm going to take 234 minus 360 equals 126. I'm going to divide that by two. And now I got to come back 63 degrees. So I'm going to zero that. Then I'm going to take this guy out and I'm going to continue rotating the way I did 63 degrees and I'll be at top dead center. You got to divide it by two because remember you're dealing with the circle. So it's got to be, it's got to be good. And Todd will rotate that back 63 degrees once I'm out here. And in a theoretical world, if he does that, the factory tools should fit right in. Sixty-three degrees. So we're going backwards or clockwise? You're coming this way. Uh, you're coming the way I went. Which was that clockwise. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sixty-three degrees. So at 63 degrees, now our jigs should fit right back in the hole, right, Todd? They should. And then once you hit the 63 degrees, don't forget to zero this. Now we should be at TDC. And our jigs fit back in. Now here's the thing, we can tell over here we're at TDC cylinder four though, right. where we went 360 yep. degrees. So we're at TDC cylinder four. That's why my holes aren't lining up on That's the why side. Holes so aren't if we go, up. if we go a full revolution, and we go a full revolution, so we'll go around all the way around back to zero. The jig should pop in, and the bolt should go directly. Ah. Come on, Todd. I remember my first time. There we go. Now, double zero. Double zero. And mine fits right in there. Yep. And everything and fits right in there. So now we know. I can locate this bolts. Yep. Just like they're supposed to. And I can on my side. So now we know we're back at TDC. We're at cylinder number one because this cam is on the back side. And this, so this is a much more accurate way now of putting our rockers in. I'll take this and I'll shoot a little bit on the cam of oil. So I'll oil on there and a little bit there. And I'll pop this guy in here. Make sure it's fully seated. And Todd's gonna do the same for the intake. Here you go. Got it. Then we need to, you do that, I'll do the torque spec. So on these rockers, you can see there is, they're offset. So there is a long side and a short side. And you have to make sure that those are lined up. So if you have this, the rocker shaft itself facing the other way, like if I were to flip this, you're gonna see that the long side, it's not gonna allow it to fit properly and we're not gonna be riding on the race. 
So that's gonna be the wrong installation. So we have to make sure in case they get mixed up or something gets jolted around where the parts are being stored, that we get this installed properly so that it's gonna get oiling and have friction in the right areas instead of the wrong areas, have premature wear failure. All right, so that's 13 foot pounds. It's so tight, it feels like it's, it feels like it wants to snap that bolt a little bit, but it's a nice stretch. Damn, CTU Sorry. is falling. Jack Bauer is trying to get a yeah, hold of Jack me Bauer's right trying now. to get a hold of Todd. Uh, yeah. All right, so now those are tight. And we will rotate over 360 degrees to get to four. Right, Todd? Yep. Turn this guy back on. Which will put us at TDC cylinder four. Back side of the cam lobe, so we're good. Oh Lord, I thought I silenced that. You got some really strange ringtones, buddy. Yeah. That one was a Velociraptor or something from Jurassic Park. All right, so now we have our rockers in on one and four. Everything rotates, we have no interference. Our jigs line back up. We're gonna double check that just because we're extremely anal about everything. So we're gonna double check that after we've rotated around a few times that our cam jigs line up. We're right there, Sounds we're on good. our hole. He's good, he's on his hole, right? Yep, and I can put bolts yep. in if I want to. So right now we now. know we've rotated around a couple times. We have our rockers back in, we have our cam shafts torqued, and now we can go through and put all the, all the stuff on. So now we would go 120 degrees, so that's why we put this thing on here. We put this thing on here, so now we can just rotate around to 120 degrees. We're gonna go for number two, yeah? Six. So, so then your next firing order would be six, because we just did one, 120 degrees would make sure we're on six. And then you just follow that around every 120 degrees until you get all your stuff in. One, six, two, four, three, five. So we would do one, six, two, four, three, five. Every 120 degrees. So Keith will fast forward some stuff, we'll throw these guys in, and then we'll show you what's next. Pop that bad boy in there, Todd. So there's a, the oiling hole is in the cap for the tensioner and one side will have an oil hole in it. The other side will be closed where it's gonna ride on the chain guide. So we always wanna make sure the hole matches the hole where there's gonna be no oil feeding into here. So basically you could stick this the other way. Yes, you could theoretically put it in upside down, but now when the oil comes in through here to feed the tensioner, there's, it's gonna be feeding a ho uh, no hole. Yeah. So and we need to make sure the hole is facing up so it can get oil feed going through the right. tensioner. The car would run that way, it would just make a hellacious noise. Yes, and the tensioner really wouldn't function properly. Also with the gasket, you can put it on wrong. The studs will go through the non-gasketed holes and then the gasketed holes are gonna be oil feeds. So we need to make sure that those line up properly or you're gonna have oil pouring out as soon as you fire it up. And these guys get the big, thick washers. What kind of washers are those, Tim? Aluminium. Crush washers. They're aluminium, right? Yep. So now we need to rotate 360. Here, I'll take, I'll take care of that for you, buddy. Oh yeah? I, got you, I, got you I was trying to find where you left the wrench again. And right where you stuck it. <laughs> So this is a little trick I was talking about. You can, if you have this spaced out here, you can hold your wrench and then you can put your hand here and a little bit of pressure and it helps you kind of go slower. 
All right, and he can pop his guy out of there. This ten this tensioner is the same as the other one. Same thing, you make sure your hole is pointed upwards. And we'll torque, we'll torque these when we get our little machine out to torque all this stuff. So what's next is we have to do, we have to do the retainers for the chain guides. Right, Todd? Yep. Which are these little guys. Here you have to be mega careful, like super careful, because these are magnesium. The boxes are magnesium. And if you don't get these puppies in here just right, you do not want to cross thread this and you do not want to over tighten it. So basically what these little guys do is a bridge that goes across here and it retains this guy in place. And I torque these by hand. You can kind of feel the stretch of the bolt, but you don't want it to go too tight because like I said, that magnesium is, is braille thin. What kind of wrench are you using? I'm using a Snap-on little Flexi guy, 10 millimeter. It's, my, it's from my secret stash. I hide these from the rest of the mechanics. We're ready to seal it, no? Yes. Right? Chain box covers, valve Chain covers. Chain box covers. Tim, I thought these valve covers were clean. Well, apparently they're not. Well, we have a guy for this. We do I'm have wondering a guy why you this. and I are standing here uh, cleaning these valve covers. We should talk about what we're, why we're cleaning them. Why are we cleaning them like this? Uh, because we deliver excellence and we cannot take a freshly built motor with fresh hardware and fresh everything and put dirty, Disgusting valve. I know. Covers. Look at this. Look how. Look at that. So this this is this is like normally clean, right? But then look at this one. Oh my God. Whoa. Sick. Ah. <laughs> so how do we clean it? Uh, first, we gave them a rinse off to get all the oil off. Right. Then we put them in our sonic cleaner. Yeah. Which is still going with the last one that had an excess of oil on it. Then we give them another rinse, and then now we are using our plastic dressing and some Q-tips and some rags so that we get in all the little crevices. Uh, and then wiping the excess off. We use off. Uh, this stuff. It's, I like using it because it smells like bubble gum. It's actually really delicious. No, so Keith, what we're using, we use little Q-tips like this. See how this is? We use little Q-tips. And we can get down in there, and then we use little micro, it's all worse stuff. You can use little micro brushes. And you get down in all these little holes. I know, it's overkill, right? But, it looks sweet when it's done, right? You get a generous coating in there. And then I use a dry Q-tip. Get the excess out. You know what's funny about those little micro brushes? Is that, how many parts have I cleaned in this place? Just today found out about those micro brushes. Why like, is oh, that? Oh, you didn't know about those? He's like, oh, I keep them in the inside of my vest pocket, inside of my toolbox, on the left side, underneath some other stuff. So these can go both ways. You got a ridge. I think anyways. All right, so last thing we gotta do is a trusty rag, and I use an old dirty one. 
And then this is just acetone, but take acetone and make sure you get all the little bits of oil off of here. Get that right little grease spot there. Should be good. This guy here. All right, so we're gonna clutch this to seven. All right, then we'll come back and torque those. All of these are the same torque. So these are the same torque, this is the same torque. So I always do everything at once. And then you just, these can go both ways. So it's the same part number for either side, but this one flips around. Now I can torque them. So we're gonna to torque these to 10 foot pounds. You see when we use the clutch on the gun, it does most of the torque for us and just gets us to that certain point. Same on the other side. I don't wait until you remember I said I was gonna come back and do these, right? Hey everyone. <laughs> We're back here in the workshop at Olson Motorsports. We're here in the engine building room. Uh, we're back with our 993 naturally aspirated 3.2. Um, we left off with the valve covers going on the car, or on the motor. So, and as you can see now, we've got the motor fully dressed, aside from a couple little pieces that we're waiting for refinishing. Um, so we have replated everything that was platable. Uh, we have powder coated all the tins and all the bare metal parts that we could powder coat, aside from the exhaust, obviously, because we don't want that to burn right off. Uh, the rest of this process has been mostly dressing the motor, cleaning everything. Um, every single part on here has been reconditioned. Most of it, as much as we can, we try to keep original. A lot, you know, there's a lot of parts that we've also replaced. Um, certain things like the uh, fuel pressure regulators, we will disassemble, clean parts, plate other parts, put it all back together with fresh O-rings and gaskets. Uh, as you can see, this motor is pretty close to looking like it was when it came off the factory. Um, so this is our almost final product. Obviously we need to put the box on and get the clutch in and uh, get it on a table so it's ready to go into the car. But this is what we like to see when we get towards the end of our builds. All the mag has been retained and kept original. All of the non-treated metal surfaces have been vapor blasted and brought back to their original finish. No coating on top of them. That's just original metal. So this is, what it, this is what it looks like at the end, final product. Uh, we put a lot of work into it. I know that you only saw about a four minute video, but uh, this is, this is you know, 50, 60 hours worth of work. Uh, blood, sweat, and tears go into this, and this is what you end up with. Anything that you guys have constructive criticism, things you'd like to see more of, things you'd like to learn how to do, um, Anything that you think we can improve upon in our process or in our videos or in our explanations, um, please make sure that make sure that you uh, <laughs> make sure that you leave it in the comments or get a hold of us uh, on some sort of social media and, and we'll try to do that on the next one. Thanks guys. Don't forget to like our channel. Don't forget to sub subscribe to our YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. You can probably find Tim on Twitter, Twitter making funny comments. Uh, please check back in with us because we got a lot of content coming out in the next couple months and uh, we'd love to have you guys as fans.
race guys can do this shit in fucking 15 minutes. And that's a whole goddamn motor. We should be able to pop two cams in in 10. You know what I mean? Where's my chair? He's ambitious. If I get in the get shit done mood, what I can only do it. What the fuck is that for? Well, if, I get, if I'm in the get shit done mood, I can only do it for 20 minute spurts. I got your side, son. You do? Yeah. Oil tube on the top. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. What'd you put on this one? To torque it. A nut. That's four corners. I mean, it's, it should be, for you, it'd be like a three hour job. I mean, Brendan would be like three and a half. I gotta tell Todd to turn his Five. mic off. Fuck off. <laughs> Todd, turn your mic off. Oh. You're trying to try record. Oh. <laughs> Here you like telling Brendan to like go get a snack and all this other yeah, stuff. Yeah, right. I, mean, I, just like to... I thought you drained the oil out of this motor. I didn't take this motor apart. You did. Come on. <laughs> this is just... supposed to be a cleaning room. <laughs> And we're in the goddamn cleaning room, cleaning parts. They're still all covered in oil. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who put, who put them oil soaked in the drawer? That's kind of counterproductive, no? Like that actually takes effort to like say, hey, let me put these oil soaked parts back in the drawer. You guys haven't let me touch this motor until today, so I don't want to hear it wasn't me. Well, I'm not the dispatch guy that's I, in charge of telling guys, hey, make sure you get those parts clean. In my defense, I wasn't the dispatch guy when these parts came off the motor, so. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, and then wiping the excess we off. We use uh, this stuff. It, I like using it because it smells like bubble gum. It's actually really delicious. I tasted it last time, it didn't end well. I had to take like a week Did off Did you try work. it? Yeah. Remember that one time I had that stomach flu? Yeah, oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't just, the stomach flu. I thought you were just hungry. It was the worst flu, no. Same I thought you were just... Me when I had greens. <laughs> 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 These are really micro, micro brushes. I know, what's cool is you can use two at the same time. So you can flat rate it, like a chopstick, see? Hold it, no, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> you hold it like this. And then, you, and then you could dip it. You could dip it. And then look, look at this. I'm not even making this up. You can go like this. And you can do two holes at the same time. So it's double as fast. That's pretty nifty. Yeah. It's actually not a bad idea. Like a chopstick. 